Hi guys, so I just wanted to pop onto my YouTube channel and share hopefully a kind of short but straight to the point video. In this video, I want to share five tips to help you create even better digital products using Canva. So these are just the things that I think are really, really important to remember when you are creating different types of digital products on Canva and things hopefully just keep you a bit safer when you do create products to resell um, and also just things to help you make sure that you create a really high quality good product for your customer. So I personally have used Canva for years now. I use Canva, everything I have to do with creating digital products that I sell online, and also with creating like the marketing around those digital products. I have used Canva for years and I absolutely love it, recommend it entirely but there are definitely a few things that I kind of want to go through with you guys that have really helped me with my experience with using Canva just make sure make sure that I stay safe and that I'm using it correctly so I just want to start by kind of giving you an example or two examples of digital products that I have created and now sell and I created them on Canva the first of them being I create art printables I actually have an art printable Etsy shop and I also have a course that shows people how to create their own art printable Etsy shop because it's just such a fun, creative, awesome way to create online income and to create low maintenance online income. And I personally use Canva to create all of my art printables I've ever sold. And another one as well are planners. I also create a number of planners and I sell those in my Etsy shop as well. For example, one of them is the Ultimate Etsy Workbook and I created this entire workbook on Canva and it has sold hundreds of times and and yeah, basically brought me in some really lovely income. So the first thing that I want to talk about is something I do mention in quite a few of my videos, but I wanted to really reiterate it when we're talking about using a graphic program like Canva. When you look to the side, um, when you're in your dashboard on Canva, you'll see tons of templates. You can even see photos, like there's loads of different photos and there's loads of different elements. But the thing that I personally recommend is that if you are not sure about Canva licensing, and I'm gonna be 100% honest, I am not a copyright expert. I am never sure on Canva's kind of like how you can use their photographs, whether you can use them in products that you want to sell personally. I would never want to make the mistake of using using something that I couldn't do that with. And the only thing that I ever feel comfortable in terms of using directly from Canva are just their basic shapes because they are just basic shapes. But other than that, I don't particularly feel comfortable using Canva's graphics and even without checking to make sure that they are free for commercial use, I don't like to use their fonts either. So I like to have a place, and I have talked about this before, where I go and I purchase my own independent graphic elements that I can use in the products that I want to sell. Because I've personally had experience with seeing that it's a whole different ball game when it comes to creating a product, including other people's graphics and other people's fonts inside of a product that you want to sell, then it is just to create something for personal use. So I'm kind of showing you here, these are all elements that I have purchased, knowing that I have commercial use license to be able to use them inside products I want to sell. And the how I personally do this, I use a really awesome website that I've talked about quite a lot called Creative Market. I'll leave links to everything that I talk about in the description box below the video so that you've just got access to it if you want to check them out yourself. But I personally use Creative Market and I just type in whatever I'm looking for. For example, I might look for looking for some floral clip art. And I have so much access to so many amazing different artists who create floral art and I know that I can purchase the commercial license to be able to use these inside of my product and I can feel 100% confident of how I can use them and something I always say is one of the best things about creative market is that if you actually find for example a, a artist that you really love their work and you want to know specifically whether or not you can use their products in a certain way inside of a certain product then it's so easy on creative market if you just message that seller directly and actually ask them 100% are you okay to use their graphics to use their stock photos inside of your products and the only reason why I emphasize this so much is because I have made the mistake of kind of doing what you see um, some people online talking about which is to kind of just 
drag and drop stuff, images from Google or images from just random platforms and just use those in your products and everything will be fine and I have been burnt by that before and I would never want to put my shop in jeopardy with that again so for me always knowing that I have a place like creative market to go where I can just purchase those graphics and then it's so easy on Canva to just be able to kind of drag and drop them and they will upload onto you can just see this section here and then you can easily start using them inside of your own products and your own designs and that's just something I always recommend making sure that you do. Another tip that I think is really important that I want to emphasize is that when you go on to Canva quite often when you're thinking about for example creating like an art printable you just click on the A4 document and that brings up just a plain piece of A4 paper. I can literally just start dragging and dropping my elements in there and start playing around with them but something that I always think is important to remember is that sometimes A4 is not not really the right size for you to be working with for your digital product and it is so important to do your homework to make sure that you are creating the right size products for your audience and I know that might sound a bit obvious but I promise you it's not. I started off on Canva and I just thought oh well there's A4 so I'll just use an A4 piece of paper and I'll start selling A4 and it took me a while to realize that with art printables there were so many other sizes that were so much more better suited for my audience. So for example my A4 prints sell quite well in my shop but they are kind of shadowed in comparison to the sales that I get when I create my 8x10 print or particularly some sizes that are larger like 12 by 16 prints do a lot lot better and it's so simple on Canva to just pick your size so if I just head back to the dashboard then I can actually just instead of clicking on the A4 document I can click just create a design I can choose custom size and I can pick my custom size so I might just go to inches do 12 by 16 create that new design and I have my 12 by 16. Now I do have a whole video on how you can create a selection of, of sizes. For example, if you want to create art printables where you'll want to create more than one size for that person to be able to download. So you might be thinking you want to include eight by 10, 12 by 16, 16 by 20, things like that. But then also, for example, even if you're creating a planner, you want to make sure that you are actually picking sizes that your audience are going to want to purchase. So with my planners, I do offer the A four size but then it also include the kind of more US version of a US letter size so if you don't really live in the UK or an area where A4 is a very popular paper size then you have another option but there are even in terms of planners there are lots of different sizes that you can choose from and half sizes you can choose from so definitely if you are planning on creating a digital product using Canva make sure that you do your homework beforehand to know that you are catering to the right size for your audience and that's just something that I've noticed even inside of my course I offer quite often when people first start out they tend to jump straight into just offering generic sizes sizes that they just think that people might want but I always recommend and that they go back and they do their homework first and see what are their competition offering. So if they're in, for example, an art printable niche where actually bigger art print sizes are much more popular, then they might wanna consider focusing on creating bigger sizes than an A4 print. Another thing to keep in mind also, and this is something that is particularly important for art printables, is that on Canva at the moment, when you go to download your art printable, you only have a few file type options. And at the moment, Canva only offers PDF format in a high enough quality to print. So for example, on Etsy, increasingly it's becoming more and more popular to want to offer a JPEG version for someone to download and print out. But if you were to just use Canva and try and download your, for example, your art printable using their JPEG, it wouldn't be high enough quality to really print. So you can get around this by, for example, downloading it in a PDF print, which would be about I think they still have it as 300 dpi so it's a high enough quality to be able to print out and for it to look good 
in that person's hand. Um, but then you might then want to use, for example, a PDF to JPEG converter to make sure that you convert that image into a JPEG that is high enough quality. You can also, I think, do this on Photoshop. I've done that as well using Photoshop. I actually take my PDF print and I create a JPEG version of it, one that's still high enough quality to print. And I'll leave a link to an article below just explaining the difference between PDF and JPEG and maybe helping you a little bit with that because I know if you are new to it, it can be a bit confusing. But yeah, this is something I had to learn that Canva right now you can't really offer a JPEG version of your art printable that is high enough quality to print. So if you're happy with a PDF print, brilliant. But if you want to offer JPEG versions of your prints as well, then you're going to need to find a way to convert that PDF into a JPEG if you're using Canva. The next cool thing that I think that Canva does, which I think is something that's so important to take advantage of, is that Canva has this amazing feature that actually shows you when you are dragging things whether or not they are aligned. So for example, you can see that full line going down the middle there is showing me that that is in the center of the page. And I honestly cannot tell you how many amazing designs that I have seen. And sometimes when I have like a new student on my course and they ask me to just check out their images and just make sure that they're good and ready to go how often I find misalignment, not only with art printables, but also with planners as well. And this is why I just think Canva is so great for this because you can make sure that everything is in line because it might to the eye look in line when it's in a digital format, but when you print it out, the amount of times that you'll see that like something that you think is straight is just slightly out of alignment and you didn't realize it at the time. And that can be truly frustrating when you've thought that everything perfect and you've downloaded it all and you print it out and it just doesn't look quite right so having that ability to be able to line everything up is absolutely amazing and something I remind you guys to take absolute advantage of. And finally, the last thing that I want to mention when it comes to working with a program like Canva and creating all of your designs and in particular your digital products on Canva, and it's something that I have definitely had to learn, is I know that it's so easy to think that even an amazing program like Canva is so safe that you can just save all of your items on here and you're never gonna have a problem with losing anything or anything like that but I always still recommend that even though you can save all of your designs and your bits and pieces on the Canva dashboard itself that once you have finished creating a design that you download that finished product and you store it on multiple different platforms so for example you might store it on a hard drive and a cloud service as well as having it on the Canva dash dashboard and that's just to protect the odds that so obviously you know I hope nothing ever happens to Canva I use it so so much but also I am aware that nothing is flawless and I have so many different products and design elements all in one place on the Canva dashboard that if anything was to ever happen to all of that, most of my products would be gone. Most of my design elements would be gone and I do not want to ever experience that. I've experienced like smaller versions of that when I've accidentally deleted things. So for me, once I have created a digital product on Canva, I will always try to make sure to download the finished product and use an additional storage system such as a hard drive or a cloud service to back that product up. So I know I have that safely, if not in one place, then in another. And I have a recent video where I talk about this in more depth, but for particularly for something like Canva, where you're using so much time and energy and passion and love to create beautiful products, the last thing that you want is to lose that all just because you didn't back anything up. So yeah, that's just my final point that I just think is really important. Like I said, I never want anything to happen in Canva and nothing has ever happened while I've used it over the years, but nothing is infallible. And so for me, it's always important for me to be a responsible digital product creator and to back those things up so I don't lose them in any circumstance. So I just really quickly wanted to create a hopefully not too long video where I talk about some of the tips that I personally use when it comes to using Canva. Because I know there's lots of videos out there showing you how to create exact things. I have some myself. I'll leave them in the description box below or I'll, I've hopefully added them to the video. So you can see how I literally create my art printables, how I create my planners, how I create some of my design elements using Canva. But I just wanted to create a video to also talk about a few points that I think are not all 
always spoken about, especially things like backing up the products that you actually create and making sure that you are being safe with the design elements that you actually use on the Canva platform to create your products. So I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.